there's a couple of things going on that I thought we should uh, thought we should cover. First of all, uh, Claudine Gay's resignation uh, from from Harvard. Kind uh, of a big deal. Kind of a big deal. Racism kind of. wins again. Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you saw this, but I think it was CNN that was reporting that uh, plagiarism is con the conservative's new target. Mm. Yeah. That, yeah. We're, that we all have decided we got to go after our plagiarism. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, what we were doing. We know it's really hard to do yeah. is successfully prosecute a case on plagiarism when there isn't plagiarism, yeah, it's it really difficult, difficult to do. Very you difficult. almost can't do it. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I believe, I believe it was also on CNN where they said it wasn't plagiarism. It was just using someone else's words without attribution, and that's totally right. Different that's totally than different. Plagiarism. Can we play that, please? Because mm. this is these plagiarism allegations uh, where Claudine Gay has had to issue corrections, um, multiple corrections. Now. Uh -huh. We should note that um, Claudine Gay has not been accused of stealing anyone's ideas in any of her no, writings. No, no. Uh, she's been accused of sort of a, more like a copying uh, other people's writings without attribution. Huh. So it's been oh. more sloppy attribution than stealing Which, anyone's ideas. Oh. Okay. Gosh, we are. Why did you know what? It has to be the racism that made us think yeah. that that's what well, well, plagiarism we're was. We're white, right? We're white. Like my impression yeah. as a white person. Yes. And <laughs> take yeah, it for, take what, it it's for what it's worth. It's not worth very much. Not very much. Racist. He mm -hmm. hates black people. He hates homosexuals. I'm, I, I don't know. I don't necessarily know what that has to do with this particular conversation. Well, I just want to make um, sure people understand yeah, okay, the whiteness that's that you're coming from. Right. Okay. So. I thought I hate monger. that taking other people's words without uh -huh. attribution was plagiarism. Was plagiarism. Like, I, I thought that's know, I, what it was. I thought that that would be like the dictionary definition. Yeah. Oh, that's a great <laughs> question. What is? Let's see. Right. Plagiarism. Um, the practice of t taking someone else's work or ideas and passing them off as one's own. Huh. Huh. Now, he said, though, to be fair, Not that it ideas. wasn't ideas, no. but, but how would one delineate whether you took someone's ideas if you didn't attribute their authorship of these words? Sure. How would well, one know if you took ideas? Don't, really, don't words just define ideas? That's what the, yeah. That's a function of what they do. I mean, unless we're do. playing Pictionary, mm -hmm. I think... That that defines an idea. Mm -hmm. Your words. Uh, so that's a fascinating. So she's gone. He's gone. We lost her too soon. We lost her. We now, did. Uh, I don't know if you read the resignation letter, but it is. It's fascinating what she said. You know, she blamed everything on racism, uh, of course, et cetera, et cetera. But let me just read her. What we should point? Can we stop for a moment there? Because yeah. you're right. Of course, she went immediately to racism and blamed mm -hmm. racism for yeah. this. But like. Again, let me go dictionary definition. Could there possibly be a better example of something that can't be racist? The reason why I bring this up is because the big hearing we all watched were three people, not one. Two of them were white. The first person who lost their job was white. So how could it possibly be racism if the second person out of three happened to be black? Because the first person was black in spirit. Oh. Okay? I, see, I see that again, now. Like, your I, whiteness I, look, white. just blocks what, what do I know? Yeah, I all know. right. So this is what she uh, wrote. Friends and fellow Ivy League citizens, in all the decisions I've had to make in my academic life, I've always tried to do what was best for Harvard. Throughout the long and difficult period of these past few months, I have felt it was my duty to preserve, to make every possible effort to complete the term of office to which I was appointed. In the past few days, however, it has become evident to me that I no longer have a strong enough base in the academic community to justify continuing that effort. Uh, I've never been a quitter. To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body, but as president, I must put the interest of Harvard first. However, I want to make one thing clear. I am not a crook. I repeat, I did not have plagiaristic relations with that paper. Instead, I only had a dream. A dream where Harvard students will one day live in a nation where they'd be judged by the color of their, not by the color of their skin, but the content of their character. But today is not that day. Instead, I've 
then subjected to personal attacks and threats fueled by racial animus. But when evil men plot, good men must plan. When evil men burn and bomb, good men must build and bind. When evil men shout ugly words of hatred, good men must commit themselves to the glories of love because darkness cannot drive out uh, darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. And it is during our darkest moments that we must focus to see the light. So let us hold these truths to be self-evident that all university presidents are created equal and they're endowed by their boards with certain unalienable rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But don't judge me by my success. Judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. Because life truly is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get. And at first, if you don't succeed, try, try again. And you know, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And With these words, I'm resigning as president of Harvard. But don't cry for me, Argentina. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. (laughs) My tenure as Harvard's first black president was one small step for man, but a giant leap for mankind. When the two roads diverged in a wood, I took the one less traveled by, and that's made all the difference. So ask not what your university can do for you. Ask what you can do for your university because life moves pretty fast. And if you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. Mm. So here's looking at you, kid. And Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. So That was actually really well written. I I didn't expect that from from her. Uh, All her original ideas. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. There may have been some words that were... What? used but not ideas just some yeah attribution i'm just saying it was very well done very, very well, well written done. like very it, well it had done almost and... like an anthem feel like i, I yeah. almost like you know how sometimes you hear that song mm-hmm. on the radio and you feel yeah. like i've heard this before but you haven't yeah. it's actually like, the first time really yeah that's what that felt like wow huh mm-hmm. well she's a great writer she really is. she's a great writer and we're gonna miss her a great deal oh. don't don't miss her too much she's got nine hundred thousand dollar job and she this is the we should go into this this is the best thing that will ever happen to her. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. The best thing she that will, will ever happen to her. She will be laundered and become more mm-hmm. powerful. More powerful. She will have multi six-figure jobs mm-hmm. handed to her for no work. Board seats she will never have to show mm-hmm. up for. Mm-hmm. She will become a multi-multi-millionaire and do nothing for it for the rest of her life with no risk of ever losing another job. It will be. This will be the best thing that has ever happened to her. Well, I personally think she should become president of uh, Simon & Schuster. Oh, really? Yeah, I do. I do. I mean, it would give her a lot of ammunition Uh, for those new speeches. (laughs) It'd be really good. Imagine how many words you could find there.